video, I'm going to show you what I did for electrical in the pole barn. Um, I did conduit. I went around and did conduit. Used the conduit as ground. Um, this is my shop area. Um, I have 240 almost every place for going to be machines and we're working. Um, 120, uh, 240, 50 amps. What I did too on the back wall was I pulled 50 amp wire um, just in case I want to put a 50 amp, but then I tied in a 30 amp breaker or a 30 amp outlet, like right there. But that's capable of doing 50 amps because I have the wire in there. So that's something you might want to think about. This is going to be my AC disconnect coming down here um, for one AC unit from my shop, and then my other one will have a furnace air handler combo but um yeah i did uh i'll i'll um pipe myself electrical myself bent, bent it all up um 42 spaces so i have my hoist everything there 200 amp service um this wall is going to be a wall coming over up to the ceiling coming over there's going to be windows here and then a french door right over here so that uh, you can roll bigger stuff in with no threshold, so it's going to be flush, so no bump. Um, here's where some more electrical, um, you know, my electrical for my radiant boiler. Uh, electrical boxes, wherever I want to put them, because it was doing it myself. It's, it only costs about two bucks extra per box to put it, so I thought, well, I'd rather have a ton of outlets. And... Uh, so right here is going to be my disconnect. I'm going to have a wall disconnect here for my AC unit and furnace. Just for backup, I probably, probably will never need the heat because of the radiant floor, but just in case. Um, this one is actually pulled uh, 50 amp wire to this one, but then uh, I put a 30 amp in there, but I can switch that out so I have the option. Um, this is uh, 115. It's going to be my TV. I'm going to have this come down to a box pry right here and do my low voltage run. Um, but as you can see, I have outlets uh, spaced every, well, you know, that's about every seven feet. So I come over here, did my main wire coming in underground. Um, this is going to be a 50 amp for a welder if possible. And this is going to be my 30 amp for a uh, air presser. And then uh, over here, it's going to be my jack shaft opener up there. Come down here, there's going to be a GFI here. Um, just more stuff. Uh, I got my spigots right here. I'm going to be painting them so hot and cold. So I have water out here, hot and cold. And then in here is going to be uh, here's my, where my water comes up. This is my drain for a sink. Here's a hot and cold. And then uh, GFI everything, tamper resistant. This switch is going to be for my um, outside lights and my ceiling lights are going to be hugged. But yeah, so one thing is if you're doing it yourself, you know, you might as well do it now and add more circuits and more outlets. So in the future, you know, it's not a pain to add them. You add them now, you're done. They don't... It, if they're on the wall, big deal. Who cares if they're on the wall? But just to do it in the future planning, because you do it now and it's, and it's simple. Then, then you have outlets everywhere and you can tap into them and stuff. But yeah, so that's my, uh, how I did my electrical. And uh, what I did was I did a uh, multi-branch wiring circuit. So um, saved on a neutral wire. So if I take this panel off, um, you can see I, my writing's kind of sloppy, but I marked it so like the like right here, multi-branch wiring circuit. So you need a, um, a dual pole, single throw, 240 volt because you're sharing the neutral. But um, that's what commercial does it, and that's how I learned was doing commercial stuff. So uh, that's how I did. It. And then then this way, if you put it with sheetrock or stuff, you hit this. I mean, you're not going to penetrate it with a screw. I mean, so it's all protected. No mice are going to chew on it ever. Um, 
it's all protected and it doesn't cost too much if you're doing it yourself, you know. So I think everything to all the wiring and conduit and stuff, I I think I paid like fourteen hundred. But then again, I have all these two forty volt, all these ten gauge and eight gauge wire. So that's where it came in because those spools are pretty spendy. I mean, I got a huge spool over here, you know. Right here, I got leftover. So, leftover eight. So, I mean, uh, I can use that or sell it to someone or whatever. But, hey guys, so uh, that's how I did mine. Did it uh, doing uh, um, uh, conduit to protect it. And then I just, uh, you know, put extra supports in there to keep it nice and rigid. I mean, it's solid. I mean, you can't do anything. You know, that's that's solid. You can wiggle on that, and it's not going to move. So, okay, guys, hopefully, hopefully this gives you an idea on how you can do yours. And uh, just plan ahead for the future. So just throw extra ones in there. And just in case, who knows, you might expand, get new machines or want to do stuff. And now you're running electrical cords when you could have had outlets, you know, every six feet, eight feet, ten feet, whatever. Okay, guys, subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.